Hello guys, good morning. So our topic for today is fixation. And fixation is one of the steps when it comes to tissue processing. And this is one of the most important steps. So simulan na natin. So we're going to learn about fixatives, the classification of fixatives, and specific fixatives. I should have included also the artifacts. I will discuss it today. What else? And a little bit about um, secondary fixative and post-chromatization. So medyo marami yung topic natin today. So get your snacks. Let's start. So guys, just to give you a... Uh, realistic expectation. <laughs> so in our school, yeah, in our school, so what we use when we process tissue are jars. Yeah, and jars. So we basically submerge. So we place. So after grossing, after the tissues were sliced into small pieces, guys, they will be placed in a tissue cassette. And I'll show you. Um, later what a tissue cassette looks like. So then, guys, in a tissue cassette, guys, you would submerge this tissue cassette into this different uh, mason jars. And so, shalaman mason jars. So, so first, guys, in the process of fixation, first is formaldehyde, 10% formaldehyde. So you will soak the your cassettes depending on the size. Uh, Based on the size, how long will it stay in that formaldehyde? It will sub be submerged in that for formaldehyde about two to six hours or two to four hours. Yeah. So formaldehyde is the reagent used in fixation. Yeah. And after that is dehydration. If you remember in our recitation, dehydration, guys, is we submerge your tissues in an increasing concentration of alcohol. So in this process, guys, uh, um, what, what our goal is, is to remove the fixative and also the water inside your cells and tissues. And so that's dehydration. And next class, so saline, guys, are used for um, clearing. Yeah, and, and and paraffin, guys. Ang paraffin natin is um is involved in infiltration and embedding. Yeah, and so class, just to give you an overview, pag sa school lang, yeah, and submerge, submerge lang. So manually we will submerge our cassettes in formaldehyde, and after a few hours we'll dip it on seventy percent alcohol. After an hour, eighty percent of alcohol naman next. 100% of alcohol, depending on the practice of that laboratory. Yeah. So, ganito ang nangyayari sa tissue processing natin. However, guys, we already have automated way of processing your tissues. Okay, so there are two main types of tissue processors or for automated tissue processing. <laughs> When I was an inter in the intern in the hospital, ito yung ano namin, automated uh, machine namin sa SLU St. Louis University. Baka iba na ngayon. Na, like noong 2012, tagal na. So, tissue transfer processor. So, when we say tissue transfer processor, so our tissue is the one that is being transferred from one reagent to another. Just like in the process of our mason jars. So you trans the the machine will transfer it to, for you. So you have so the the role of the medical technologies is to fill up this uh containers or this basket. So first container you should fill it with formaldehyde because that's the first one. Next fill it with seventy percent alcohol. Yeah. So class. So in manual processing, the human is the one that transfers the tissue basket or the the cassettes into one reagent to another. So in this automatic processor, so the processor is the one that moves that moves the tissue for us, okay? So we have this one, this horizontal type, and we have this carousel type, yan. So apparently, mas compact lang itong carousel type, yan. So paikot lang siya. So yun yung naiba dito. Dito is pahori. Horizontal, okay? So here in tissue transfer, that tissue is transferred from one reagent to another. Here, guys, ito yung tissue cassette. 
Yeah, these are the tissue cassette. This is fluid transfer processor. So guys, for fluid transfer processor, our tissues remain uh, stationary, sorry. Our tissue remains stationary and the fluids are the one that that are pumped into the into this cassettes. Kumbaga, spray, something like that, or pump. They are, so class here, class, the tissue is stationary. The fluid is the one that's being transferred. Here, the fluid is stationary. The tissue is the one that is being transferred. Yeah. So class, the fluid is pumped into this cassette. So the first, so based on the tissue processing uh, steps, so the first reagent to be pumped here is your formaldehyde, isn't it? Next is the increasing uh, concentration of alcohol. Next, silane. And, and next, paraffin for infiltration. And so hanggang infiltration lang itong fluid transfer, ha? Okay, so yun, class. Okay, so guys, let's start with your fixative. So if you remember, guys, when we discussed the different type of specimens, the different type of specimens, its sources, you, you will notice, guys, that the specimens that could come into the lab in our histopathology section would come in different size, shape, okay? Some tissue would come or organ biopsy would come that is very hard or very thick. Yeah. Some tissues, some organ that will come in our laboratory are very soft and friable. Friable. Yeah. Malambot masyado. So guys, um, as you remember, the tissue process is a very long process. For it, for the tissue to become to be cut into thin slices, it will undergo so many processes. Yeah. And class, our tissues. Our biopsies are prone to be distorted all throughout the process. Yan. Pwede silang ma-distort. Pwede silang ma-subject into trauma. Kung baga, sa, kung, sa, kung ano-ano yung na-experience nila na mga reagents and so on, mga biochemical reactions. So, class, the first and most critical step when it comes to tissue processing is fixation. And the reagent that we use for fixation are fixatives. Yan. So, sabi niya, preserving fresh, fresh tissue for examination. Last, we need to preserve it. Yan. It's the first and most critical step. Yan. So, class, as you notice, um, among our other sections, other major subjects, one of the most critical steps that you have to do is labeling. Tama? Patient identification. Yan. Here in histopathology, we fix before we label. Okay? We fix before we label. This is the most critical step. Yan. Why? Our primary aim is to preserve the morphologic and chemical integrity of the cell to be as lifelike as possible. And to preserve the morphologic and chemical integrity of the cell. Yeah. And the secondary aim is hard, harden and protect the tissue from process and handling. handling. So guys, once a tissue is removed from the body, and a cell is removed from the body, automatically class, the generation process will start. Kumbaga, the process of the, the decay will start already. There will already be putrefaction, yan, the process of decay, and autolysis. Wherein, guys, your cells has enzymes. And the enzymes class will slowly digest the cells. Yan. It will automatically destroy the cells, yung mga lysozymes sa cells. So class, to reduce these effects of the generation process class, we need to use fixatives as soon as possible. Okay, so yun. we have to make sure that we have to preserve the morphologic and chemical integrity of the cell. The morphology inside the body yeah, should be the same when it comes out of the body so that we will examine it. Yeah. It will be lifelike as possible. So class, if you delayed fixation, 
some of the cells will not be clear anymore. Some of the morphology will not be there anymore kung dinelay mo ang fixation. Okay? Naintindihan ba? So, guys, this is very important. Yan. So, class, ayun, once you already place it in a fixative, yan, it's, it's your responsibility. So, that's the first step. But you have to have the responsibility that the organ or the tissue that you're going to process is completely fixed. Okay? So, fixing it is the first step. However, ensuring that it's completely fixed is another thing. Okay? You may have to make sure that it's hard. And it should protect the tissue from process and handling. Yeah. So, that's it. So, ano pa ang class? Fixation prevents, inhibits bacterial decomposition. So, class, among your fixatives, there are different types of mechanisms how your fixatives work, how they fix your tissues. So, first off is they are capable of forming cross-links between your proteins. Capable of forming cross links between proteins. So, they form methylene bridges. Example dito, guys. Ito, nagumago ng cross link. E formaldehyde. Yan, gumagawa siya ng cross links. Next is covalent addition of reactive groups. So, class, one, an, other fixatives class, what they do to fix the tissue is they add a reactive group. Other fixatives, dehydrates. Yan. Other fixatives yan, have an effect like acids because our fixatives will be, some of our fixatives will be acids. Yan. So they could coagulate the proteins. They form salt yan, and heat. So pag heat, nagko-coagulate rin ang protein. Yan. So types of fixatives. Some fixatives are additive. Yan. Pag sinabi natin additive, the fixative becomes Penetrates, it's taken in and become part of the tissue, just like your formaldehyde. It form cross links. Yan. Yung mga metallic fixatives natin, mga additive yan. Ito, non-additive. Fixative are not taken in. Yan. It facilitates the removal of water in order to form cross links to form. Class, wag malilito. Some of our fixatives are alcohol. Yan. I know alcohol is mainly used for dehydration. But at the right concentration, guys, alcohols can also be fixatives. And they are non-additive. So, class, this is a photo of sample tissues. Ito, sure ako, kidney to. This one, I'm not sure. Wherein, guys, um, these images uh, are these tissues were submerged or fixed in formaldehyde for a very long time. Yan. Because as you can see, there are already artifacts that are forming inside the tissue. Masyado na silang matagal sa fixative na nababad. Yan. Mamaya, alamin natin, ano ba itong mga, ano, mga artifacts na, na, na lalagay na, na, na form sa loob ng tissue if your fixatives were used. So, they have advantages and disadvantages. So, if you fix a an organ in a formalin for a very long time, it could form artifacts. So, things to consider when we are fixing. Number one, guys, is speed. Speci specimen should be placed in fixative as soon as it is removed from the body as of yan. Okay. Next volume. Yan. So, class, um, it's important that your fixatives are cheap. Yan. Because depending on the size of your tissue, kailangan mo ng sobrang raming volume ng fixatives. So, class, if, for example, your 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 uh, your specimen is a shape is shaped like this yeah so 20 times na shape na size ng ano natin so if it's 25 grams yeah 25 grams 25 grams times 20 so that's the amount of volume of formalin or fixative that you will place it's about 10 to 25 times of um tissue 
of volume of formalin ang ilalagay mo. Pag museum, 50 to 100 times. Yan. So, volume, guys, is very important. Yan. Actually, 20 times is the minimum. Okay? You have to have 25 times more. Yan. To ensure that the tissue is completely submerged. Submerged in the formalin or the fixative that you will use and to ensure guys that all of the sides of the organ or the biopsy will be exposed to the fixative okay so to ensure that the tissue is completely submerged dapat marami yung volume ng volume ng, for, ng formalin or fixative so about 20 times yeah. actually minimum yan Okay, next, penetration. Yan, penetration. So, sabi, formalin diffuses into, into the tissue approximately 1 millimeter per hour. Yan. So, guys, if you are fixing a very large organ, yan, it will take yan, so many hours to fix it completely. Yan. So, what the... So what our pathologist does is they already cut it into smaller pieces, yan, into one millimeter size or two millimeter size, so that uh, the formalin will will penetrate the the tissue already. Yan. So masadong malaki yung organ, guys. Matagal mo siyang isa submerge sa fixative. However, if you already cut it or the biopsy is small or it's in small small fragments, class. Yan, it's okay. Few hours lang. Pero pag masyadong malaki, it could take days. Okay? Next, duration of fixation. Yan, it could take days depending on the size. Okay? So, there should be sufficient time. Sufficient dapat ha, ang time that the tissue will be fixed. Okay? So, an average of 2 to 6 hours depending on the size. So, if it's, if it's 5 millimeters, so, submerge it for um uh, four or five hours less ganun. so so formalin um diffuses slowly yeah mamaya tingnan natin paano ba mababilis yung diffusion ng formalin so three hours if you will subject a specimen for electron microscopy here guys osmolality yeah. osmolality is important in maintaining the micro micro environment of your cells yeah, to ensure that your cells are morphologically clear when you will focus in the microscope so class to make sure that your cells are intact hindi sila nag shrink hindi sila pumutok ganyan. so we have to ensure that our fixatives are has the right osmolality yan yeah, or the, the right tonicity and so ayon class to me to ensure uh, that your cells will be intact the same as its morphological feature inside the body kailangan osmolality of the specimen is very important so class uh, in light microscopy the speci the fixative is slightly hypertonic about 400 to 450 milliosmoles However, class, dito na wiwindang. 10% neutral buffered formalin is the most common general fixative. Ito ang pinaka-common na general fixative. Is, its osmolality is 1,500 milliosmoles per kilogram. Yan. However, class, okay siya. Uh, it, it maintains the integrity of your cells. So class, paki-remember yung mga numbers na to, 400 to 450 milliosmoles for light microscopy. Less isotonic daw pag electron microscopy at 340 milliosmoles and grabe sa NBF neutral buffered formalin 1500 milliosmoles. So matindi pero class, iso uh intact naman yung size ng cell. Osmolality is very important. And concentration, class. So the perfect concentration of formaldehyde that we use in the laboratory class is 10%. Okay? So 37% to 40% of formaldehyde is our stock solution. 
So class 1 commonly available in the lab is 37% to 40%. So class, it's your responsibility to uh, dilute it to 10%. Okay? Class, if it's more than 10%, the, the, the tissue will harden on the outside. Yan, yun yung sabi nila. Once the formaldehyde has higher concentration, more than 10%, class, the tissue tends to harder, harden on the outside and the formalin could not penetrate the center of the tissue. So it's better that use only 10% of formaldehyde and 3% only of glutaral, glutara, glutaraldehyde. 3% ang concentration. Tipid. Tipid rin kasi 3% lang. However, mas mahal ang glutaral dahil. Next, guys. We have temperature. So, class, um, when you're processing your tissue, optimal na. Yan. In the, in fixation, in routine, so, we, uh, we process it in ambient or room temperature at 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. However, guys, if you will use your carousel type, your horizontal tissue processing, your fluid transfer processors class, it is set on a temperature which is 40 degrees Celsius. Yeah, 40 degrees Celsius. So class, in fixation, um, subjecting the tissue to heat, will hasten the penetration of formalin into your tissue. Diba? Common sense. Alam niyo yan, pag mainit, mas mabilis gumalang yung molecules, it could easily penetrate. However, guys, the disadvantage is that um, if some of, the, some of the parts of the tissue were not well submerged into the formalin, or some parts are not exposed yet to formalin, it could increase the degradation or the putrefaction process. So you just have to be careful when you are subjecting your tissues in in high in increased temperature. That I know, kung kung may mga parte na hindi pa na fix nung nung substance natin, so ano magdedecay, mas mapapabilis magdecay kasi mas mainit. Yeah. For electron microscopy, it's interesting that it's that the temperature should be cold. For urgent biopsies, yan, medyo mainit class kasi mabilis niya eh. Kailangan mong i-fix na mabilis eh. Yan, formally na 100 degrees Celsius for the diagnosis of tuberculosis. DNA and RNA are fixed at 65 and 45 degrees Celsius. Yan. Medyo matas rin. And class, we have this. We also have an automation, which is your micros, microwave processing, wherein to increase the, 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 the uh, to decrease the speed, yan, to increase the turnaround time, I think, but to hasten tissue processing glass, we have, we could use a microwave. Yan, para mapabilis, we could use a microwave. So, you, you are exposing your tissue to microwave waves at 65 degrees Celsius. Parang microwave talaga, mo microwave, I'll show you later. The thickness of your tissue yan, is important. So, and when it comes to fixation, so 1 to 2 millimeter lang pag electron microscopy, 2 centi uh, millimeter squared, so 2, 2, 2, 2, Centimeter squared for light microscopy. And the width is 0.4 centimeter. Yeah, and so these are the areas of your tissue, 2 by 2. And brain class, 2 to 3 weeks pa, ang, ang pag-submerge sa tubig. That's interesting. Ay, sa tubig, sa formalin. Let me just show you this image. That, um, sabi, 1 mm per hour ang penetration ng formalin. So, class, based on this image, so this was this cube, for a uh, liver cube, which has 25 mm in width and in height. 
Yan. Lahat to, 25 millimeter. Nag-experiment sila. Gano ka kabilis yung penetration. So, after an hour daw, 0.8 daw. 0.8 millimeter lang. After 2 hours, 1.2 millimeter na yung na-penetrate. After 4 hours, 1.6. Ang bagay, after 8 hours, 2.2. So, 8 hours na to. Ah. Note that after 8 hours, the center of the specimen remains untreated. So, class, if the tissue slices are so big, 25 millimeter, maliit na to, ah. Pero, class, ano talagang mas manipis pa dapat? Mga 2 millimeter. 2 centimeter. Laki na to, ah. I suggest, mas maliit pa. Pag ilalagay na sa cassette. Para mas mabilis mag-penetrate yung formalin. So class, other factors. Um, fixation is retarded by the size and thickness of the tissue specimen. If there are mucus, fat, blood, and it's cold, it, is, it slows the fixation process. And it, it's enhanced by agitation from mixing. So if we are... If we would do this histopathology activity, so agitating it and every 15 minutes or so could increase the could increase the penetration of the formalin. Class, I remember that when we have that activity. So class, uh, you and your group mates will do that. So hopefully magawa natin, maling natin, di ba? So me, I, when I was in college, yun, kanya-kanya kami, kanya -kanya uh, dala dala ng mga bote ganyan. at magpupuyat ta guys that every hour you will try to uh, shake and every 15 minutes try to agitate your tissue and transfer it to the next reagent yan so magdamag yan tama kasi it's per hour so so perhaps the biopsy is small so in formalin it will only take 2 hours tapos after 1 hour Lipat mo sa alcohol, 70%. Tapos mix mo every 15 minutes or so on. Kung masipag ka, lagi mo lang minimix and ililipat mo na naman. Ayan. So, yung your backlash, nagsislip over sila pag ganito. So, ayan. Masayang sana, di ba? So, characteristics of a good fixative. So, ayan. It should be cheap and economical because you will use lots of volume of this substance. So, dapat hindi siya ganun kamahal. Stable and safe to handle. Let's look at formalin. Yan. Fast acting. Permits a rapid and even penetration. Inhibits decomposition and lysis. It must harden the tissue. It should be isotonic. Yung 400 to 450 milliosmoles. Must render the tissue insensitive to subsequent processing. In sense, it shouldn't be reacting to the next steps anymore. Example, if your if your tissue has fat, yan, may lipids yung fat. Class, if you did not fix that well, class, that fat could dissolve into your alcohol. Yan, pwedeng mawala yung fat, yung lipid. So, class, it should be, so proper fixation should render the tissue insensitive. Next, it must be compatible with many staining procedures. Yeah. So class, some staining procedures are juicy. Yeah. Na may preferred silang fixative for, for, it, for them. Yeah. So, ganun. So, types of fixatives. So, these are the overview of your fixatives. So, we have simple fixatives. It's made up of only one component or substance. Puro. Walang halo. Next, we have compound fixatives. Yan, nagkahalo sila. So, other than acid, may konting alcohol, and so on. Compound fixatives. Next, according to action, we have microanatomic. We have cytological. Yan. It preserves the nucleus, the cytoplasm. And we have histochemical. It preserves the chemical components like your carbohydrates, Yan, yung glycogen, yung mucopolysaccharide. So, yung histochemical fixative, it focuses on the chemical. Microanatomic fixatives focus on the anatomy. 
the morphology of the cells. So these are the overview. So it's classified. So ito yung mga microanatomy. At pag-aaralan natin itong lahat ng fixative na ito. Itong mga formal salan, NBF, under uh, aldehyde fixatives, Hayden Susa. Kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ano pa rin siguro ito? Aldehyde. Itong zenker, um, metallic, and so on. Yan. Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin. Flemings. Yan. Osmic tetroxide. So, tignan natin yung mga classifications ng fixatives. Yan. So, class, here are the example of histochemical fixatives. So, take note, you are trying to preserve the chemical components of the tissue. So, pag lipids, yun nga eh. To, told you, baka matunaw yung lipids sa dehydration. So, there are specific fixatives for them. Mercury chloride, metallic fixative. Phospholipid. So, phospholipid is a type of lipid. Yan. Baker's formal calcium. Pag cholesterol, digitonin. Carbohydrates, alcoholic fixatives. Glycogen is a stored carbohydrate. And B, neutral buffered saline talaga ba? Yan. Let me double check this. So, proteins. Next, electrons, cytochemistry, Karnovsky, paraformaldehyde, literaldehyde, surgical biopsies, acrylin. So, let's begin. Ito na sa next phase ng ating topic. These are the specific fixatives. So let's, let's begin with our aldehyde fixatives. So, it's for routine paraffin section, also electron microscopy, histochemistry, and enzyme study. So, guys, there are so much uses for your aldehyde fixative, and there are many types. So, simulan natin sa formaldehyde or formalin. Yan. So, it's widely used at 10% buffered at 7 to 8 to prevent oxidation. So, guys, if you will hear formalin, yan. So, when we use it, it's at 10%. Okay? Pakalimutan. So, class, the 37 to 40% are your stock solution only. So, class, when we use it, it's buffered. Yan. So, to prevent oxidation so that it will not become formic acid. So, guys, according to OSHA, there should be a permissible exposure limit, which is 0.75% ppm per work shift. Dapat daw hindi sa sobra ng 0.75 ppm ang exposure mo sa formalin because it could cause uh, irritation to the nose, to the eyes. Yan. And class, this is carcinogenic. Okay? So, prolonged storage induce a white precipitate which is para formal dehyde. Yan. Para formal dehyde. So, one of the artifacts that happens when formalin, uh, when your tissue is submerged to formalin for a very long time, there is the formation of paraformaldehyde. And it could be removed by 10% methanol. Yeah. So yes, that's what I mentioned a while ago. Your formalin, so that it, um, it, it's, it acts as a fixative by making methylene bridges. Yeah. So in that way, it preserves the tissue. And it hardens the tissue. Next, 10% formal saline. So guys, this is a compound fixative because we have formaldehyde and we all ha also have sodium chloride. So it's for CNS tissue, central nervous system tissues, and post-mortem tissues. So if it's used for autopsy, ito na lang, formal saline na lang. Okay? and preserved enzymes and proteins. So, class, a while ago, ito yung pinakita ko. So, this is a formalin fixed paraffin section of kidney showing typical deposition of acid formaldehyde hematin. So, class, a while ago, yung white is your paraformaldehyde. Ito yung acid formaldehyde hematin or formalin pigment. Yan. So, guys, this happens... This happens, guys, when your uh, formaldehyde comes in contact with your hemoglobin. 
Yan. Acid formaldehyde hematin. Yan. When it comes in contact with your hemoglobin, hematin. Yan. Formalin pigment. It's usually brown to black in color under polar, plo, ano, polarized light. Okay, next. So, 10% NBF. Pagkakalimutan. So, this is the most common general fixative. So, kung may choice man ang mga pathologists, the safest, the most affordable, and most efficient fixative that they could use is 10% neutral buffered formalin. Yan. It's the best fixative for general fixation and also for iron containing tissues and preservation of surgical postmortem and research specimen basically it's a general fixative all around kumbaga next formal corrosive or formal sublimate yan you have to be careful with this because it could corrode metals yan so, this fixative could corrode metals due to the mercuric chloride. So, formaldehyde plus mercuric chloride. So, this is a compound fixative yeah, for postmortem and yeah, sa mga autopsy. And it also fixes lipids. And no need to wash out. No need. So, class, pag nag-fix tayo, and depending on the fixative, ha? pero pag formaldehyde, after mo siya i-fix, wash it with tap water. Yan, linisan mo for 15 minutes. Yan, wash the tissue, the biopsy in water. Rinse it with, rinse the fixative out. Yan. Pero dito sa formal corrosive, formal corrosive, hindi na daw kailangan i-wash out. Next, alcoholic formalin. Yan, so is the formalin na lagdagan ng alcohol or, or gendres fixative. It's for immunoperoxidase studies, for rapid diagnosis, for preserving glycogen. Pero may, may better pa na fixative for glycogen. And it also fix sputum. Yan, ito. I think this ito yung pinaka-unique sa kanya. It fix sputum since it coagulate mucus because it has the addition of alcohol. What else? We have glutaraldehyde. If you remember the concentration, it should be 3%. And it has two formaldehyde residues. It is used with osmium tet tetroxide. It preserves plasma proteins. Class glutaraldehyde talaga. Ang standout sa kanya ay pang electron microscopy. However, it's very expensive. It's lower than your formalin in penetration, but however, it's stable, less shrinkage, and less irritative. Formal calcium class for adipose tissue, specifically phospholipids. Formal calcium or bakers. Yan. Yung kanina na rin, acrolein and Karnovsky. Karnovsky. Yan. Walang Ella plus Karnovsky. Next, we have metallic fixatives. So under it, we have mercury chloride, lead fixatives, and chromate fixatives. Okay. So the, the most common metallic fixative are your mer uh, mercury chloride. Yeah. It's disadvantage class. It ha hardens the outer layer. And a black granular deposit happens. So my ano siya? may artifact na nako-form and it's corrosive to chemicals, to metals. It's for tissue photography. Yan, one, two, three, four. Yan, apat under mercury chloride. We have zinker, zinker, zinker formal. So zinker is for liver, spleen, connective tissue fiber, and nuclei. So, there is a black mercury chloride deposit. So, meron tayong desenkerization. Later, ayan, alamin natin kung paano tinatanggal yung mga black deposits. And we have zinker formal. So, yung disadvantage ito ha. Formal, we have, it preserves pituitary gland, bone marrow, and blood tissue containing organ like your spleen and liver. 
We have Hayden Susa, Hayden Hein Susa, Hayden Hein Susa for tumor biopsy B5. Yan. So pag may B, bone marrow biopsy. Next class, chromate. Yan. So class, the disco start already making flashcards. So chromic acid are for carbohydrates. Regards or Mueller's for demonstration of chromatin, mitochondria, mitotic figures, Golgi body, RBC, and colloid containing tissue, example your thyroid. And so chromate fixatives are under your metallic fixatives at under chromate, merong apat. Merong pang di potassium dichromate, preserved lipids, and mitochondria. Orange fluid, ito, study of early degenerative process and tissue necrosis for rickettsia. So, rickettsia is a bacteria. Tama ba yung spelling ko ng rickettsia? So, pa-double check ha. So, class for metallic fixatives, all produces... Uh, black granular, sa mercury chloride. Lahat daw to, it produces black granular uh, artifacts except Heidenheim, Suso. Riketsha, double T, single S. Sorry. Class, we have lead fixative. So, ito, madali lang siya. So, for acid mucopolysaccharide. So, an example of mucopolysaccharide are your missing. Yan. So, guys, this is a corneal biopsy. So, ito, mga mucopolysaccharide to. So, it was stained with alcyon stain. So, it's better to use lead fixatives. However, itong lead fixatives, sabi niya, meron siyang insoluble lead carbonate na napoform. So, you could filter it or add acetic acid. Next, picric acid fixatives. Ito, pakunti na lang pakunti. So, picric, PB, magkakalimutan. So, dalawang bilang. Bowens and Brazilis. So, class, magkakalimutan pag picric acid. It's yellow. Your Bowens is yellow. Okay. So, yellow daw. It has an advantage or disadvantage. Yellow stain is useful for a small biopsy para madali mo silang makita. Yan. Marami siyang advantage. Yun. No need to wash out with water. It's suitable for aniline dyes. It, it's good for, for demonstrating glycogen. However, picric acid, do not dry this out because it could be explosive. Huwag itatapon sa sa sink. And you could, however, if you want to remove the yellow color, expose it to 70% ethanol followed by 5% sodium thiosulfate. So, Bowens, guys, is for glycogen and embryos. So, class, ito, embryos, perhaps hindi ito sa human niya, sa veterinary medicine, ganyan. So, disadvantage for penetration, not good for kidneys, mitochondria, and hemolysis RBC. Brazil's daw, less messy than Bowen's for glycogen as well. So, picric acid is for glycogen demonstration. Glacial acetic acid. So, acetic acid is called glacial acetic acid because it solidifies at, at 17 degrees Celsius. So, pag lumamig lang ng ganyan, titigas na siya. It's for nucleoproteins and chromosomes. So, good for um, nucleus, bad for cytoplasm. It destroys the mitochondria and Golgi body. So, if you want to see the nucleus, yan. however, masisira yung mga cytoplasm. Yan. Acetic acid. Okay. Next, alcohol fixatives. Yan, rapid na. Okay. So, for alcohol fixatives, so, at, at a certain concentration, alcohol fixatives could be use as fixatives. Okay, alcohol could be used as fixatives. And it will denature or precipitate your proteins by destroying the hydrogen bonds. Its disadvantage is the glycogen granules tend to move towards the end of the cells. The cells. There is polarization. 
So this polarization, what happens is that the glycogen migrates toward the end of the cells. Honestly, I don't know why it's a bad thing. <laughs> and because siguro, you're not demonstrating the true morphological feature of that cell. So alcohol fixatives, you have 95% ethanol. Most common cytologic fixative. Yeah. So if you, you will fix your pleural fluid, your um, vaginal smears, your different uh, cytological fluid that we will receive, 95% ethanol. Methanol for bone marrow and blood smear. However, however it's low. Car noise, most rapid. Yan. Hindi ko makalimutan to. Kasi ang car, mabilis. So most rapid fixative, car noise. Yan. And it's also used for um, fixing brain for rabies diagnosis and fix chromosome. So, brain ba ng tao? Brain ng aso. Okay. Gendres, alcoholic formalin. Yan na lang. Diba sputum, guys? Ano na? It coagulates the mucus. Tama ba? Newcomers, mucopolysaccharides. Like your lead fixative. Next, osmium tetroxide. Dalawa lang klase si osmium tetroxide. Flemings. So, pag narinig mo na yung Flemings, guys, that's your osmium tetroxide, okay? So, pag Flemings with acetic acid, it fixes the fat. And for nuclear structure, if you remember, acetic acid is good for uh, for nucleoproteins, for, nucle for the nucleus. However, it destroys the cytoplasmic structure, di ba? So, Flemings without acetic acid, that's for cytoplasmic structure, okay? Pag narinig mo itong Fleming, dapat yung brain mo, osmium tetroxide na ang naiisip. So, pag, pag sputum, di ba? Dapat is yung alcoholic formalin. So, yan. Kept in dark colored chemically clean bottle. So, it is photosensitive. Yan. Nag-degrade siya pag na-expose sa light. So, kailangan na siya dark colored and clean bottle. Yeah. It's for electron microscopy but used with glutaral dehyde. Especially for fats to make them insoluble in alcohol and silyl. Disadvantage, it's expensive. Poor penetration, extremely volatile. So guys, it, it produces fumes, it forms black precipitate, and may cause conjunctivitis and blindness. Okay. So yung black precipitate, you could remove it through running it to cold tap water. Next other fixative, we have PCA, trichloroacetic acid. So, also use as weak decalcifying agent and poor penetration. Hala, sleepy na ba ako dito? Poor penetration. Next, acetone. When we use acetone, guys, ito, this is also highly volatile. Yan. So, di ba may mga fumes, mausok, madali siyang ma, ano, mag-evaporate. So, it's used at cold temperature. For brain also, in rabies diagnosis, the same with car noise. Next, heat fixation, thermal coagulation of proteins. Kung naalala nyo sa microbiology nyo class, you fix the slides diba? that you will use for gram staining. You fix you, the specimen, so you will strip it on your slide. You will heat it on your Bunsen burner. So yun na yung heat fixation. Next, and we have microwave. Yan. Diba? At sabi ko kanina, it's at it's the temperature is 65 degrees Celsius. Yeah. The oscillation frequency is 2450. So this is the recommended um, millihertz when using microwave. It promotes penetration class of formalin. So class in using microwave, kailangan may fixative pa rin, ha? So however, guys, it produces vapor. Kung may microwave mo yung yung formalin with your tissue, it produces harmful vapor. Therefore, when using microwave, when, once you open it, it will produce vapor. You should place it in a fume hood. Yan, class, it could increase the 
penetration talaga of your fixatives so from 12 hours to 20 minutes. Ganun kabilis. But you have to be careful nga. When you're subjecting tissues in heat, you are also accelerating the genera regeneration of the tissue if it's unfixed. So guys, this is your microwave. Microwave in histopathology. Yan, you place it in this container. Andun yung mga kaset. Yan. So yun, enter mo lang. Yung microwave mo. And some class, yung microwave, yung lalagyan niya. Yan. Yan. They could also agitate yan. Umiikot yan. So please, I'll, kung naalala ko, I'll add a microwave video sa, ano natin, canvas natin. So we have other terms. We have secondary fixation. So class, primary fixation, the first one is not enough. Yan. So it has to improve the demonstration of certain substances. If you want to do special staining, if you want to ensure complete hardening, we perform secondary fixation. Okay? We have this term post-chromatization. Okay. So for post-chromatization, so this is uh, under your secondary fixation, wherein we allow your um, 2.5 to 3% potassium dichromate to be uh, to be to um to to be um exposed or to be pumped to our specimen so it acts as more than um glass i think you heard the term more than before um, when it comes to our microbiology. So, dun sa gram staining natin, class, kung naalala nyo, yung vias, crystal violet, iodine, um, acid alcohol, and safranine. So, these are for gram staining. And our more than there is iodine. Yan. So, it improves the staining of our crystal violet. So, it enhances the appearance of the crystal violet. So, yun ang purpose ng mga more than. It, it improves the staining, the optical differentiation of the different parts of your tissue. And also, washing out. Yan. I think I discussed this na yung washing out. So, after fixing, yan, some fixatives needs washing out. Yan. You remove the excess fixatives. Yan. You remove the artifacts and so on. And some, and some fixatives do not need washing out. So finally, guys, this our fixative artifacts. Yan. Paki check na lang. So I, I tabulate, eh, tinabulate ko na para sa inyo. Class, we have this term desinkerization. So this is the removal of the black granular deposit using alcoholic iodine. Yan. So, paki-screenshot na lang, paki-base na lang, guys. Yan. And this one, how to remove this, this artifacts, cosmic acid, malarial pigments, picric acid. Yan. So, guys, you have reached the end. Yan. So, if you have questions, so just go ahead, ask your questions. I'll see you again. Bye.